Standard 7th Subject History Chapter 12 Progression of the Empire Dear students, till now we have learned about the rise of the Maratha power and its expansion. We studied the developments from the foundation of the Swaraj till its expansion into an empire. In this chapter, we take a brief review of the Sardar families who gave their valuable contribution for expanding the Maratha kingdom in the northern parts of India. The Holkars of Indore Mallara was the founder of the Holkar rule at Indore. He served the Maratha state for a long time. He was well versed in guerrilla warfare. That means using techniques such as hit and run tactics and all. He proved his valour in the northern campaigns of the Marathas at the time of Bajira I and Nanasai Peshwa. He was instrumental in establishing the Marathi supremacy in Malwa and Rajputana. He proved to be of great help to Peshwa Madhavrao in reviving the Maratha prestige in the north after a defeat at Panipat. Along with Malara Holkar, Purnishloka Ahilyabai Holkar was also a great administrator who played a major role. Purnishloka Ahilyabai Holkar was the wife of Khanderao, who was Malara's son. Khanderao died in the Battle of Kumberi. After a few days, Malara also passed away. After him, Ahilyabai assumed the reins of the Indore administration. Indore, which is in Madhya Pradesh. She was a capable, astute and excellent administrator. Means, she had the abilities to accurately assess a situation or even people. She made new laws for agricultural cess, revenue collection, etc. and put the affairs of the state in order. She strove to bring more land under cultivation, digging wells for farmers, promoting trade and industry, building lakes and tanks. Further, she built temples, ghats, marts, dharmashalas, drinking water facilities at all important places of pilgrimage in the four quarters of India. This effort of hers was important for the cultural integration of the country. She looked into judicial matters personally and dispensed justice. She was very generous. She had great love of books. She ruled ably for 28 years and enhanced the Maratha prestige in the north. She brought peace and order to her kingdom and made her people happy. Yashwantra Holkar tried to save the Maratha kingdom when it was on the decline. So this is all about the Holkars of Indore. Now let's learn about the Bhosles of Nagpur. Parasoji was given the Jagir of Varhad and Gondavan during the reign of Shahu Maharaj. Among the Bhosles of Nagpur, Raguji was the bravest and the most capable. He brought the area surrounding Tiruchiripalli and Arkot in the south under Maratha dominance. Shahu Maharaj had assigned to him the Chauthai rights of Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. He brought these territories under the Maratha dominance. In 1751 CE, the Bhosles of Nagpur won the Odisha territory from Ali Vardi Khan. Till 1803 CE, Marathas dominated Odisha. So, this great work was done by the Bhosles of Nagpur. Do you know the Maratha Ditch? The British at Kolkata used to fear the Bhosles from Nagpur. So, to protect the city of Kolkata from a possible Maratha attack, they dug a ditch around the city. That ditch came to be known as the Maratha Ditch. Now, let's learn about the Shindes of Gwalior. Bajira I had rightly judged the capabilities of Ranoji Shinde and he made him a Sardar in the north. After Ranoji's death, his sons Jayappa, Dattaji and Mahadaji too proved their valour and strengthened the Maratha rule in North India. Peshwa Madhav Rao conferred the family title on Mahadaji. Mahadaji was a brave general and an astute statesman. Mahadaji was instrumental in re-establishing the Maratha supremacy and prestige in North India after the Maratha defeat at Panipat. He realized that the guerrilla tactics of the Marathas would not be suitable 
for the warfare in the plains of the north. He trained his army and modernized his artillery, artillery under the guidance of a French military expert, De Boyne. With the help of his, this trained army, he subdued the Rohilas, the Jats, the Rajputs and the Bundelas. The British began to take interest in the pol politics at Delhi. When they felt that the Marathas might have become weak after the Battle of Panipat, they managed to get the Diwani rights of Bengal province and wanted to capture the Emperor of Delhi. So now we see that the British are trying to establish their rule in all over India. In these adver uh, adverse circumstances, Mahadaji Shinde defeated the British and reinstated the Emperor on the throne. The Emperor was pleased with his bravery and conferred the title of Vakil e Mutlak, that means Chief Agent of the Emperor. So, this title was given to Mahadaji Shinde, which meant that he had the authority of civil and military rights. He accepted that position on behalf of the minor Peshwa Savai Madhavrao. Due to this, the Marathas gained full control of the empire. It was very difficult to save the tottering empire. Mahadaji managed the difficult affairs with strong determination and looked after the Delhi affairs during 1784 CE to 794 CE. The hires of Najib Khan responsible for the Panipat battle were still plotting against the Marathas in Rohilkhand. So now there were other enemies also. Najib's grandson, Ghulam Qadir, captured the Red Fort and tortured the emperor and his victims for their wealth. He gouged out the emperor's eyes and took hold of the royal treasure. So he acted very cunningly. In these circumstances, Mahadaji defeated Qadir. He confiscated the wealth from him and returned it to the emperor. He reinstated the emperor on the throne of Delhi. Thus, Mahadaji recovered the Maratha prestige, which was lost after the battle of Panipat. He controlled the politics of India by putting the emperor under Maratha control. Due to the family feuds, means prolonged quarrels or disputes amongst the Peshwas, Raghunath Rao opted to go to the British camp. He wanted to become a Peshwa with the help of the British. It was not acceptable to the Maratha statesmen. This led to an inevitable conflict between the Marathas and the British. The conflict between the two great powers, the Marathas and the British would finally decide who the ruler of India would be. From Mumbai, the British marched on the Marathas via Borghat. Borghat is a mountain passage in Khandala in Maharashtra. The Maratha army gathered under the leadership of Mahadaji Shinde. The Marathas blocked the supply of food grains to the British using guerrilla tactics. Both the armies met at Vadgao on today's Pune Mumbai road. The British were defeated in this battle and were forced to surrender the custody of Raghunath Rao to the Marathas. Now, Delhi was under Maratha control till 1803 CE. When we note that the British conquered India after battling with the Marathas, we understand the importance of Mahadaji's invest achievements. After setting in orders the affairs of Delhi, Mahadaji came to Pune. He died at Vanavadi near Pune, where a memorial is built to him. Like the Shindes, the Holkars and the Bosles, some other prominent Maratha Sardars also rendered noteworthy service to the Maratha Raj. The navy raised by Shivaji Maharaj was strengthened by Kanhoji Angre and his son Tulaji. With the strong navy, they contained the naval powers of the Portuguese, the British and the Siddhis. They defeated the coastline of the Maratha state. Khanderao Dabade and his son Trimbak Rao laid the foundation of the Maratha power in Gujarat. After the death of Khanderao, his wife Umabai routed the Mughal Sardar of Ahmedabad. She conquered the fort there. Later, the Gaikwads made Vadodara in Gujarat a seat of their power. The Pawars of Dhar and Devas in Madhya Pradesh 
rendered valuable assistance to the Shindes and the Hulkars in expanding the Maratha power in the north. The Maratha state was in disarray after the death of Peshwa, Madhavrao. Nana Fadnavis, the famous administrator of the Peshwas, was a Maratha statesman. He st- set right the affairs of the state with the help of Mahadaji. While Mahadaji was busy restoring the Maratha supremacy in the north, Nana managed the affairs of the south. In this, he was helped by the Patwardhans, Haripant Fadke, the rest and other Sardars. As a result of this, Maratha supremacy was established in the south. The Holkars of Indore, Bhosles of Nagpur, Shindes of Gwalior, Gaikwads of Vadodara brought glory to the Maratha power on the basis of their valour, leadership qualities and capability. They were the pillars of the Maratha power in its last phase. The Maratha Sardas were successful in establishing the influence of the Maratha power both in North and South India. After the death of Mahataji Shinde and Nana Fadnavis, the Maratha power began to wane. At that time, Bajirao II, the son of Raghunath Rao, was the Peshwa. He did not have leadership qualities and had many vices. He had many enemies. He was unable to unite the Maratha Sardars. The internal strife between the Sardars weakened the, their power. During the reign of Bajirao II, the Maratha influence in the north and south waned further. Waned means it was weakened. The British replaced the Marathas. The British captured Pune in 1817 CE and hoisted their flag Union Jack there. In 1818 CE, the British defeated Marathas in the Battle of Ashti in Solapur district and finally the Maratha power came to an end. This event marks a major change in the history of India. After this, the British managed to gain control over a major part of India. India came into contact with the Western world. That led to many changes in India's social system. Many old things became redundant on or were pushed aside. This was a major transformation. A major change took place. The medieval period of Indian history came to an end and the modern period began. So this way we have learned in this chapter all about the progression of the Maratha Empire. Hope you have understood this chapter. Do read this chapter from your textbook as well for a better understanding. Stay safe, keep learning and thank you.